These cannons are your conventional cannons. They're known as muscle loading cannons because the way you load them is gunpowder, the wadding, and the cannonball itself goes down the barrel of the cannon. The cannon gets fired, and then someone with a long stick and a wet sponge at the end will have to shove that wet sponge down the barrel of the cannon to put out any burning embers. Because if that was not done, the next person to load up the cannon will find himself in many pieces all over the place. This cannon, on the other hand, this is known as a breech, a um, six-pound breech charge bombardetta, which means that the wadding, the gunpowder and the wadding, gets loaded inside a little iron cylinder. In Spanish, it's known as a servidor. In English, it's the server or the powder mug. And he is pointing at it right now. We already have one in the breech part of the cannon, preloaded, ready to go. The only thing that rolls down the barrel of the cannon is the cannonball. And we have one. Not very impressive, not very big, but the size of an orange or a small grapefruit, and it does not explode on impact. That only happens in Hollywood movies. <laughs> the exploding cannonballs did not make it here until the 18th century. This cannon is capable of firing that cannonball with a full load of gunpowder at a distance a little over a mile. So just so you will be, you understand and get an idea, the bridge down there, the Lions Bridge, that's nine tenths of a mile from where we are at. So this cannonball can be fired over that bridge. However, with not so much accuracy. You see, the longer the distance, the least accurate it becomes. So a well-trained crew of cannoneers will be able to hit their targets each and every single time at half that distance. So it would be more or less where those sailboats are docked over there, just beyond this giant metal cross. Now Pedro Menendez brought here 20 of these cannons to defend and protect the new settlement of St. Augustine in 1565, which was established in that field directly behind me. And the way he brought these cannons here, well, naturally he brought them aboard his 900-ton galleon, the San Paleo, and then they will be put on little wooden rowboats and rowed here on these wooden rowboats known as chalupas. We have a sample of one right over there. Reason being is that his galleon would not be able to come through the inlet. You see, the inlet was not that deep. It was very shallow. The deepest point of the inlet was nine feet, and that only happened at the high tide. So everything had to be brought in here in small little wooden rowboats. However, the enemy had to do the same thing. So whether it be the French Huguenots or the pirates, they would have to anchor their boats out in the, uh, in the uh, Atlantic and row all their military personnel on little wooden rowboats like that to attack St. Augustine. Now that little cannonball cannot do any damage to a big 900-ton galleon. Maybe crack the wood, but that's it. However, those little cannonballs will be able to do a lot of damage on those little rowboats, wooden rowboats. Especially since I said there were 20 here, 20 cannons. Each of those cannons was capable of firing three to four cannonballs a minute. So now we're talking 60 to 80 cannonballs flying at 400 miles an hour on those little rowboats. You think it would damage them? Definitely it would. And of course the wood would splinter and the soldiers would be hit by the, those sharp splinters. If the uh, enemy was not hit by the splinters, he'd be wearing body armor because they were going to attack. And what happens when you hit the water wearing 50 pounds of body armor? You sink. You're not going to swim. So you see, Pedro Menendez did not need big cannons or big cannonballs to protect St. Augustine. All he needed was small cannonballs and small little cannons like the Bombardetta. And they did the job perfectly. Back then, the formula to fire this cannonball out of that cannon at 400 miles an hour was to use half the weight of the cannonball itself in gunpowder. That is a six pound solid iron cannonball. Therefore, you would need three pounds of gunpowder. Three pounds of gunpowder is equivalent to three modern day sticks of dynamite. Here's what we're not doing. We are not putting in three pounds of gunpowder in this bombardetta, because if we did, when we go so up, all of you would be very impressed for a second. And then you all would be deaf, dirty, and suffering the biggest headache you've ever had. Another thing is our neighbors around here would not like their windows shattered. The folks down at the downtown St. Augustine, the merchants and the visitors would not like it either. Plus the police 
will come here and give us summonses for noise violations. And we don't want to do that. Another thing we're not doing is firing an actual cannonball. Even though this cannon is capable of doing it, and it has done it every time we test it out, over at the uh, artillery range of the National Guard, we're not doing it here because people live out there. They would not appreciate a cannonball coming in through their window or their wall at 400 miles an hour. And also out there is the Coast Guard. And certainly they do not have a sense of humor. <laughs> and of course, myself and my buddy, Rabbit Bob, we do not want to go to jail dressed like this. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready? We're ready. Yeah. Okay. Let me, uh, let me uh, advise you how to take the proper picture. <laughs>